There's a lot of confusion about various names given to the philosophy of voluntarism, anarcho-capitalism, anarchism, libertarianism, etc. And I just thought we'd go over a few of those today and kind of clarify some nuances. Uh, and looking at the base root of words or of phrases is very important. Uh, so often, I'll look at someone and say, well, they're not really a voluntarist, or they're not really an anarchist, or, or whatever. But but I have this bias. I think that there are a lot of things in life that are important. And I have a tendency to add things to the mix and say, well, a voluntarist is somebody who believes that everything should be voluntary, and they enjoy a certain amount of uh, sugar-free vanilla creamer in their coffee each morning, because these are other things that I value. And so I have to kind of go back to the root, and that's what I'm kind of encouraging in this video, is that you look at the root of each word and recognize that being a voluntarist or an anarcho-capitalist might not be a complete system for how to live life and how to make choices. I don't think it is. So voluntarism, everything should be voluntary. Um, that is essentially what voluntarism means. Various people, including uh, Aberon Herbert, who, who kind of coined the phrase, Carl uh, Watner, who made it famous in the last 30 years, um, and, and a number of other famous voluntarists each have their own idea of what it is. But really, if we just look at the word, nobody has a right to claim it and say that, you know, it, it means anything other than what the word means. And, and the word means Everything should be voluntary. I believe in voluntary interactions, nothing else. That's voluntarism. It has nothing to do with Bitcoin or ayahuasca or uh, organic foods or conspiracy theories or any of that stuff. It has nothing to do with that. There's probably some overlap. A lot of people who uh, look into intellectual things will also be interested in a certain type of economics, Austrian economics. But just because a person is a voluntarist doesn't mean they've ever read a single thing about Austrian economics. Most have, many have, but not everyone. Let's look at another phrase or, or title, uh, anarcho-capitalism. Anarcho, essentially don't think there needs to be a government and don't think it's a good moral thing for there to be a state, people who coercively rule over others. Even if you know, you're really scared and you want them to, it's just not morally acceptable. So that's the anarcho part. Capitalist, capitalism is essentially uh, who gets to own the means of production and benefit from it. So a, a capitalist would say that if Billy is really good at building things, he's a contractor, a carpenter, that he should be able to own his own hammer, and we'll call that his capital, um, that's his, his tool of production, his means of production is his hammer, he can own his own hammer, and then he can go out to somebody and say, hey, uh, I would like to fix your roof, and the person says, that sounds good, and then Billy fixes the roof, the other person gives Billy the money in exchange for having uh, fixed the roof. Billy gets to keep that money or use it however he chooses. That's capitalism. The other alternative that's pretty popular, an alternative that's popular, is uh, collectivism or, or kind of a, it goes by a lot of different names, but, but the general idea is that Billy is not allowed to keep the money. He may not own the hammer. The government would own the hammer. And then when the government would decide whose roof needs to be fixed, they would then say, Billy, go fix that roof. Billy would go fix the roof and the government would be paid the money. And then the government would distribute the money as it saw fit. So that's kind of the opposite of capitalism. So I think most people, I think especially those, you know, probably what, 80% of the population has an IQ over 90 I think most of those people say, well, yeah, it would kind of make sense for Billy to own a hammer and be able to benefit from his productive labor and his knowledge. So that is kind of quickly, that's what anarcho-capitalism is. Again, I didn't mention Bitcoin. I didn't mention uh, LGBTQTR, or I didn't mention um, being a Christian or not being a Christian or 
um, smoking weed or flat earth or anything like that. It's just simply, I don't think there needs to be a government. I think people should be able to own the means of production and uh, reap the benefits from producing. And also, they have to bear the consequences of, of decisions that don't turn out so well or, or circumstances that don't turn out so well. So that was voluntarism and anarcho-capitalism. Now, if a person goes along with this non-aggression principle, which is kind of the, the root uh, for many years, we've thought of that as, well, this is kind of the foundation. You just can't initiate violence against other people. That just ain't right, man. Don't do that. Well, is that an entire life system, a good system for living a good life? No, I don't think so. I think there are things like being a hard worker, looking ahead, predicting what can and uh, what is likely to happen, what isn't likely to happen, what could happen, and then preparing your life to be, be able to handle those things. I think that's important, but it has nothing to do with thinking that everything should be voluntary or being an anarcho-capitalist. has nothing to do with that. Um, I wish it I wish everybody would do both of those things, uh, you know, live a responsible life and have a good, kind, compassionate humanitarian philosophy like voluntarism. But you can do, you can kind of piecemeal the thing. And so it, it's hard to look at somebody and say, well, he's a voluntarist and that explains blah, blah, blah. No, that explains one little corner of the world. That explains what that person's philosophy is about how humans ought to interact with each other, or more so how they ought not. Uh, you may not initiate violence, the, the non-aggression principle again. It doesn't say that you need to be kind or loving or giving or anything like that. Those are all other little aspects as we build ourselves into being the people that we want to be. So let's not confuse those. Let's Let's know that there's a whole world out there of different things, economic knowledge, hard life skills, you know, knowing how to fix a lawnmower and, and how to get onto a subway. I'm a country boy. I have no clue how to do that. I would be so lost if I, if I left the U.S. and I went someplace like New York or New Jersey and I had to get on a subway, I'd be petrified. I have no idea. Well, that's a life skill. Some people have those life skills and think those are important. I happen to think there are some other skills that are important, like knowing how to pull uh, another vehicle out of the snowbank when it's stuck. Well, we all have these different skills. We have these things that are important to live a good life, how to treat people, but they don't fall under the umbrella of voluntarism or anarcho-capitalism. Am I right or am I wrong?